shot in 4K ultra high definition. Your number one source for local news. WRAL News. Coverage you can count on. It's another really cold start out there this morning, but this will be the coldest morning of the week. I'll show you the very warm conditions we have coming up in the next few days. Also this morning, Durham Public School workers have been on strike and could get some resolutions with their issues with their pay. WRL's Laura Levine will join us live to break down their demands for the school system. And you have a chance to share what you think about a highly unpopular proposed rate hike on homeowners insurance. We'll tell you about the discussion that is happening today in Raleigh. A lot of people hoping uh, that doesn't happen, <laughs> but we'll talk about that coming up. Thanks for joining us on your chilly Monday morning. I'm Michelle McConaughey in for an HU. And I'm Jeff Hogan. Yeah, happy Monday. Here's we get a work week started. Uh, the coldest day of the Ooh. week to get to get things started here. Yeah. Elizabeth Gardner in the WR Severe Weather Center. A lot of folks will be talking about these temperatures today. Yes, look at that. 16 in Roxborough, 17 in South Hill. So we have some teens out there this morning. 18 in Southern Pines, 19 Goldsboro. It's 21 down in Clinton, 22 in the Triangle, and Rocky Mountain, 20 in Fayetteville. These temperatures are maybe uh, about the same as they were this time yesterday. But, you know, some people aren't up as early on Sunday morning as they are on Monday morning. So uh, this may be a bit of a shock to you. This high pressure system is uh, the reason that we're seeing these very cold temperatures. But as the high moves away, our wind will start to come out of the south, and that's going to start to warm us up a little bit later in the week. Right now, though, it's 22 degrees. Our wind is calm at RDU, so we don't have very much of a wind chill, and it's a very dry air mass, so there's not a lot of frost out there. You may have a little bit of frost on your windshield. Temperatures will be in the 20s all the way up until around 9 a.m. We don't climb above freezing until around 10 a.m., and then we'll see highs in the upper 40s this afternoon, a little bit warmer than what we saw yesterday. We have, would you believe, some 70s in the forecast for later in the week, but it will turn wetter as well. I'll show you all that coming up. Thanks, Elizabeth. This morning, Durham school employees who've been striking could get a solution to the issues with their pay. That strike caused problems last week for families who rely on buses to get their children to and from school. WRL's Laura Levine joins us live from the Durham School Bus Depot. And Laura, tell us about this special meeting happening in just a few hours and the problems that are expected to be addressed. <laughs> Well, Jeff, good morning. This morning, many parents are going to be waking up with a lot of uncertainty, not knowing if their students' bus drivers will roll out of this lot and head on their routes today. Uh, that is because of the pay issues, the concerns that uh, continue to impact classified staff. The Durham Public School Board will hold a special closed session this morning. A DPS says some employees received overpayments between July through December of last year uh, due to an error in the implementing salary changes for classified staff staff. Parents and staff had held those sit-ins that you've mentioned at DPS uh, downtown offices. Parents have also been asked to uh, bring their children to school. And on Friday, the Jordan High School PTSA posted on Facebook asking for assistance to clean the cafeteria and classrooms because there were no custodians who showed up. We spoke with uh, uh, one parent who says that this has become an equity issue and they hope DPS can find a solution. We know that meeting uh, today again begins at 8 o'clock this morning. It is important to mention that DPS also suspended their chief financial officer. So we're wondering if we're going to get more uh, questions and answered about the status of his role today. Again, that meeting begins at 8 a.m. Laura Levine, WREO News. We're live in Durham. And today you can share what you think about a 42% proposed rate hike on homeowners insurance. The Department of Insurance says more than 8,600 people have emailed and comments about the hike request so far. That is more than eight times the amount of people who commented on the 2020 rate hike proposal. The public comment hearing is this morning at 1030 to 430 this afternoon. It's at the Abel Marl building on Salisbury Street in Raleigh. You can also join virtually at the same time. The man charged with killing a woman in Durham Saturday is due in court today. 56-year-old Patrick Whitaker Jr. faces a first-degree murder charge in the death of 45-year-old Jennifer Moore. Authorities also charged him with larceny. Police made the arrest at a scene along NC-55 around 2.30 Saturday afternoon. We have no details on how Moore and Whitaker may have been connected. Also, police have now told us how Moore was killed. Have not told us, I should say that, Michelle. 
And today marks 51 years since Roe v. Wade protected the right to abortion across the country. That landmark ruling was struck down by the Supreme Court in 2022. And today, faith leaders from across North Carolina will speak in support of protected access to legal abortions in the state. Representatives from diverse faiths will hold a news conference at 10 o'clock this morning. They include leaders from the Universalist, Jewish, Baptist, and Methodist communities. Last year, North Carolina lawmakers passed a law banning most abortions after 12 weeks. Durham police are investigating a suspicious death. They say officers responded to a cardiac arrest on Killarney Drive just before 1.30 Sunday afternoon. The person was found unresponsive and taken to the hospital where the person later died. Police say they're investigating this death as suspicious but didn't elaborate why. We are working to learn more about a shooting in Johnston County. It happened at the Junction nightclub near Benson. This was the scene when the WRL breaking news tracker got there around 2.30 Sunday morning. You can see multiple Johnston County Sheriff's deputies working that case. We've learned that one person was taken to the hospital with serious injuries. So far, no information on a suspect. Good morning, Ken Smith here in the WRN Live Center following some breaking news out of Johnston County. Get, want to get you right to this brand new video just into our newsroom just before we came on the air. This is a serious crisis. The Highway Patrol is investigating along I-95 South. This is the Four Oaks exit. Most specifically, it's Brogdon Road, exit 93 of I-95 South. There's a serious uh, car crash that's happening there. Uh, we're told by the Highway Patrol that there's a car somewhere in the wooded area that you looking at. Uh, they've asked us not to get any video of that area because of the what the troopers are calling the serious nature of this crash. Of course, we're working uh, to find out exactly what happened. The reconstruction team, according to our crew on the scene, just arrived on the scene. We have a crew on the way to the scene and look for updates And the top of the hour uh, right here on WRL. <laughs> Ken, thanks for that update. Today, former President Donald Trump will be back in a New York courtroom as his E. Jean Carroll defamation damages trial continues. After that, he'll return to New Hampshire for a rally on the eve of the primary vote in that crucial election state. Hundreds of supporters packed a rally, tr a rally that Trump held in the state Sunday night. Trump began his speech by praising Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who announced earlier Sunday he is suspending his campaign for the Republican nomination. Trump thanked DeSantis for giving him his endorsement. I appreciate that, and I also look forward to working with Ron and everybody else to defeat crooked Joe Biden. We will have to get him out. We have to get him out. We just heard. And Trump's lone challenger now, Nikki Haley, also held a campaign event in New Hampshire Sunday. Recent polling averages put her 15 percentage points behind Trump in that state. We are working to learn if there has been an arrest in connection with a sexual assault report at an NC State sorority house. The university sent an alert to students shortly before 2 o'clock in the morning on Saturday. A female student reported that she was sexually assaulted by a male student at the Pi Beta Phi sorority house. Police do not have the suspect in custody. However, they do say they've identified him and he is affiliated with the university. We have a traffic advisory for people in Johnston County this week. Part of I-40 will experience temporary closures starting tonight. Bridge work will require I-40 West at US-70 to close for several hours between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. through Friday. A detour will be in place for drivers at exit 312. This work is part of a project to complete I-540. Construction is underway on North Carolina's first bus rapid transit line along New Bern Avenue in Raleigh, and some neighbors are not so happy about it. The city broke ground on the New Bern BRT line back in November. It'll connect downtown Raleigh, Wake Med, and New Hope Road with a faster bus service and dedicated bus lanes. City leaders are considering a rezoning plan to allow for higher density development along the corridor. Opponents say that that will force existing historic African-American neighborhoods and businesses out. That was the focus of a meeting organized by the group Livable Raleigh. City, uh, Raleigh City Council member Jonathan Melton supports the BRT line, but also wanted to hear what citizens had to say. I think we have to make sure we get this right so that folks who are living here can benefit in the transit and then also to make sure that the transit is successful so that as we look to implement it in other parts of the city um, that we're still qualifying um, for the funding that we need. And, you know, I'm very focused on reducing car dependency and trying to give folks options for getting around. 
And there's a you public hearing on the rezoning plan a week from Tuesday. Opponents of that plan say they'll speak. They will attend and speak out. 20 minutes before 5 on your Monday morning, nurses at a major medical center in Hawaii are on strike. Why they say the concern is not about pay, but about the workload that's making it hard to provide the best care to patients. And we'll take you live out to Apex this morning. It's cold out there this morning, but we have warmer temperatures on tap for later this week. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner will join us after the break to tell us how long it'll stick around. From the WRAL Severe Weather Center, North Carolina's most experienced team of meteorologists. It is 443 and it's a cold start out there this morning with our temperatures in the teens and 20s. But this is going to be the coldest morning that we'll see all week. Big changes coming uh, for a warm up later in the week. Right now, we take a live look at Sanford. Skies are clear and lots of teens out there. 18 Lewisburg and Southern Pines, 17 in Tarboro, 19 in Irwin, 18 in South Hill. It's 20 in Goldsboro, 22 Rocky Mount, 20 in Fayetteville. And just uh, about the time we're starting to get used to this, it's going to change. Heading out the door for exercise this morning, though, definitely feels cold. Cold. We won't see temperatures above freezing until we get to around 10 a.m. This afternoon, temperatures will be in the upper 40s. Our wind is light today, so we don't have a wind chill to deal with, and it will be nice and sunny. As soon as it warms up, it turns wetter. I'll show you when to expect rain coming up. More than 100 demonstrators turned out in Park City, Utah, during the Sundance Film Festival, calling for a free Palestine. Protesters say they were hoping to turn the media attention toward the situation in Gaza. The health ministry in the Gaza Strip says the Palestinian death toll from the war between Israel and Hamas has soared above 25,000 now. The activists demanded a ceasefire. Over 600 nurses in Honolulu, Hawaii, are prepared to be on the picket lines this week after contract negotiations broke down between the nurses' union and hospital. Nurses in Kapalani Medical Center walked off the job yesterday and plan to stay on the picket lines for a week. The nurses' union says the issue now is not over money, but about how many patients are assigned to one nurse. Hospital officials say the ratio of requirements the union is seeking could impact their ability to operate and delay patient care. One nurse on the picket line noted that her desire to perform well on the job, uh, but she said the conditions staff face present a safety issue. It's a safety issue when you don't have enough time to do a good job, and it makes us feel bad. We are here, we want to do a good job. I care, I have no children. My patients are my children and my grandchildren. If nothing happens this week, the union and the hospital are scheduled to go back to the negotiating table January 31st. A part of Atlantic Avenue shut down in Raleigh because of a water main break is back open again. A break happened Saturday morning at the intersection of Atlantic and Ingram Drive. Crews worked all day and all through the night trying to fix the issue. Part of the road was blocked off even Sunday morning still. It reopened around 11 a.m. It was a construction accident that broke the main, not water freezing in the cold temperatures. With the 2024 elections now underway, state officials are racing to educate voters on the new rules they'll find at the polls. Voters will now be required to show photo ID, something that most North Carolinians have never had to do. The rules for mail-in voting are also changing, as are other election laws. Politically, it's putting elections officials in a tough spot. Republicans have passed new, stricter laws. They say people don't trust in elections anymore and change is needed. Democrats say the new rules will disinfect franchise and legitimate voters not stop fraud. The state's top elections director says she believes most people see elections as fair and trustworthy. Otherwise, they would not be voting in record numbers like what happened in 2020. When you see voters participating, that's an indication to us that they still have confidence in the system. When you don't, it's my firm belief you don't participate. And yet we're seeing voters participate. Uh, you know, in, in on par with what we've seen before or greater. And for more details on what state elections officials are doing to boost voter confidence and help the 2024 elections run smoothly, you can go to the NC Capital section of WRL.com. You need to find some dinner plans this week. Might be a good one to check out a local restaurant. The winter edition of Triangle Restaurant Week starts today. It includes restaurants in Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill, Apex, Morrisville, Cary, and Holly Springs. 
Participating restaurants will offer a special two or three course set price menu between $20 and $50. Each day they are open. You visit restaurant websites to view their hours and the days they plan to offer these special menus. Since the inaugural event, Triangle Restaurant Week has grown to reach more than one, almost one and a half million people and has featured more than 125 of the region's eateries. And if you're going to head out the door and go to a restaurant tonight, you might need the jacket. But Thursday, it might be a totally different story. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner showing us where we stand now and where we're going to be on Thursday. It is wild. Isn't it? So 22 right now. And then by Thursday, we're going to see a high of 72 degrees. That sounds fantastic. It sounds like spring, but rain will come along with it. That happens so often this time of year. We see typically our moisture coming up out of the south, so it tends to warm things up. And it'll be a dramatic warm up, but it's uh, maybe not going to be so pleasant to be outside. We take a live look at Pinehurst this morning. Look at this. There's the moon. Um, it looks full in this uh, picture, doesn't it? It's absolutely gorgeous there. It'll actually be full on Thursday. So we're going to have a lot of mornings to see this big, beautiful moon. Um, and it looks almost like there's a pond there here on the golf course, but that's actually a cover over the uh, over the greens there as they're doing a little rehab before the season begins. 22 is our current temperature. Our dew point's 12, so it's pretty dry out there. You might run into a little patchy frost. There was a good bit of frost on the grass when I came in, but I didn't see a lot of frost on cars this morning. We don't climb above freezing until around 10 a.m., so it is definitely a very cold start out there. But skies are clear, as so we could see from the moon and from the tower there as we have it all lit up in blue for clear skies. It is 16 in Roxboro and Henderson, 18 in Lewisburg and South Hill, 17 in Roanoke Rapids, 19 in Goldsboro, 16 in Siler City. Lots of teens out there this morning. 19 Irwin, Smithfield, Goldsboro, 18 in Southern Pine, 16 in Sanford. So uh, this feels Feels like one of the coldest mornings that we've seen in our two really cold snaps. This afternoon, temperatures will climb closer to normal, though. 49 in Raleigh, 48 in Durham, 52 in Fayetteville, with lots of sunshine. It's going to be a nice day. The blue shaded areas are where temperatures are below normal, and of course, it's been well below normal. Watch what happens, of course, over the next few days. You can see all the warmth moving in. The colors turn dark. Look at that. Um, almost pink there as we get into Friday. That's an indication of well above normal temperatures, and that stays with us through next weekend. So this past weekend, very cold. Next weekend looks very warm. Our normal high is 52. We're below that today, but above it tomorrow at 55. And then we're in the 70s on Thursday and Friday. But we do have rain that goes along with that. Friday is 60% chance, Saturday a 50%, and so is Thursday. So we move into this wetter pattern, and uh, it may be with us for, for a bit. So from 49 today to 73 on Friday, we do see the temperatures dropping just a little bit Saturday and Sunday, but that is still above normal. You also see rain on our icons. Thursday through Sunday. Does that mean it's going to rain every day, all day? Not necessarily. We'll walk through it hour by hour for you coming up. We'll wind down that road, Elizabeth. <laughs> Thank you. I'm seeing it coming. Yeah. Cold temperatures across the country are causing issues for some wildlife, and we will show you the moments firefighters in Kansas rescued a swan frozen at the top of the lake. While many in Hollywood are awaiting the next awards show, a growing group of filmmakers is planning their next entry in a challenge that's growing every year. David Daniel has details in today's Hollywood Minute. Now, this is the 11th anniversary of the Easter Seal Disability Film Challenge. And it's bigger than ever. The short film competition helping change how the world views disability is back. Founder Nick Novicki announced from Sundance, in addition to the usual prizes, festival screenings, industry mentorships, and filmmaking equipment. The winners of Best Film, Best Director, Best Writer, Best Actor, and Best Editor will receive $15,000 grants. Films have to be written, shot, and edited in five days. The genre for 2024 is buddy comedy. This year's challenge runs April 2nd through the 7th. For more info and to sign up, visit disabilityfilmchallenge.com. This is people with disabilities telling their own stories. We are one in four in America and worldwide, and we are still not included at the rate we should be. And you know what? We are changing that together by telling authentic stories. And I can't wait to see your authentic buddy comedies this year. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Today you can learn more about why bird populations are dropping in North Carolina and across the country. Dave Southwick of Wake Audubon Society will give a presentation today in Oxford. He'll speak about what's contributing to the loss of birds in recent decades and what you can do to help reverse the trend. The program gets started at 7 o'clock tonight at the Granville County Expo Center.
Well, speaking of birds, firefighters in Wichita, Kansas, helped rescue a swan stranded on a frozen lake. People living in a nearby apartment complex called Friday, saying the bird had been there since the previous afternoon. The rescue effort didn't take long. The firefighters brought the animal back to dry land, covered in a towel. Well, college basketball star Caitlin Clark is doing okay after a scary incident after her game on Sunday. Check this out. As Ohio State fans rush the court to celebrate their team's win over Clark's Iowa team, a fan runs into Clark and knocks her to the ground. You can see it highlighted in the video here. She says she had the win knocked out of her, but she's okay. Ohio State's athletic director apologized for what happened. Glad she's okay. AFC Championship game matchup is all set. A thrilling game between the Buffalo Bills and Kansas City Chiefs. They traded the lead six times Sunday. The Bills took a 24-20 lead into the fourth quarter after this touchdown pass. Josh Allen to Khalil Shakir. And the Chiefs took the lead back early in the fourth quarter on a touchdown run by Isaiah Pacheco right here. The Bills had a chance to tie the game late, but kicker Tyler Bass' field goal attempt sailed wide right. And the Chiefs hang on for the 27-24 win. They'll play the Baltimore Ravens in the AFC Championship game next Sunday. On the NFC side, the Detroit Lions are on their way to the conference championship game for the first time in 32 years. The Lions got a big win in front of their home crowd, taking down the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 31-23 and now moving within one game of their first Super Bowl appearance. They'll go to San Francisco next Sunday to play the 49ers for the NFC championship. Well, this morning, Durham Public School workers have been on, who have been on strike could get some solutions to issues with their pay. WRL's Laura Levine will join us live to break down their demands for the school system. And tomorrow's New Hampshire primary is down to two main candidates, Nikki Haley and Donald Trump, after Ron DeSantis suspended his campaign Sunday and endorsed the former president. We have Trump's reaction to that endorsement.